Matthew, what happened? I think there's something here. That's not meant to be. So I have to ask you, like, I had the pleasure of actually talking with you for The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It as well. And so I'm stoked to talk to you about this. So I was wondering, were there any lessons that you learned from doing that? Because I know how much you love this franchise, the universe, and then applying it towards The Nun too. You know, I think one of the big lessons, you know, it wasn't so much a lesson, um, but the big thing that I wanted more of in Conjuring 3 was I wanted, I wanted to have more kids involved in the story. I think that, you know, we, I was really proud of the way that movie opens with the, the exorcism of David Glatzel. And I think that that sucks people in and seeing a kid get exercised and twist around and having to be so violent and intense. I think that really sucked everybody in. I think as the movie progressed, you know, that that was the end of his story and it becomes this investigation. It becomes a movie that really does not have kids in it. And it's funny because I actually, I think kids work really great in horror movies. I think it really sucks you in. It really makes you, you know, scared for them. And it was, it just wasn't part of the story. It wasn't part of the the real, their real investigation. It wasn't part of the DNA of what, what was you know, what happened. So there wasn't ever any way to naturally get the kids in, but I was, I was so excited with this because I just thought, Oh my gosh, we're, it's the conjuring DNA. We're going to be able to set it in a boarding school. We're going to be able to fill it with, with these little girls and they're going to be terrified and, you know, running around from demons. It just, it felt like an awesome opportunity. No, I love, that's what I actually love was like, I love seeing all the girls and scream and, and everything. So I was wondering for you, it's like, what did you do to motivate them then for, for that? I don't know. Or if like, they were just, Hey, go. And they were just great at just on cue, like doing the screams and acting terrified. Those girls were great actors. First of all, I always just treat, you know, actors, I mean, almost whatever age as adults. I mean, I think it's, you got to just treat, treat them with the respect and just, you know, talk to them plainly. And, um, and also give them the, like, they're storytellers as well. They're not just like, cause if you just talk down to kids, kids don't like that. I got two little kids of my own. And it's like, you need to just like, you gotta be a parent sometimes, but you also just need to talk to them directly. And the same thing applies when you're working with kids on set. I think just treating them like with the respect of being a coworker. And um, we were really lucky with that. We benefited from having really scary monsters. Bonnie is, she's a sweet woman outside of it. When she gets on and she goes into nun mode, she's really terrifying. And just having her like lurk around a corner or like being in the shadows really gets everybody terrified. They, it gets the, them on the game. We also had some other creatures and manifestations and monsters within the movie. And, um, we had, uh, I won't give anything away. I don't want to talk about like one of them, but there's, there's one entity that we had an amazing performer play and he is so scary and so terrifying. And he got me scared. Like he would be like, you know, like the, the sounds that he would make were so unsettling and it got all the kids scared. And like that becomes like, it starts spreading like wildfire. Like it's really so much fun. And then with this, you know, we're in 2023. So there's technology, visual effects and everything. Have you ever just sat down and just for like, let's work a second, step back and think what it would take for you to have done this movie, just using all the practical effects, like the cheats and everything that people have to use to do in the eighties. Could you pull it off or would it be more stressful? I think it would have been, um, a lot of the movie is in camera. There's a lot of stuff. A lot of our creatures are, um, you know, there, there's always like little uh, kind of cleanups, like little visual effects cleanups, because I think whenever you're working with practicals, some, sometimes, uh, you know, things start to kind of fall apart or deconstruct, or you kind of need a little bit of like cleanup to make it just look polished. Um, the, you know, the, the sequence in the bell tower, 100%, that would have been done in a much different way if we we're doing it in the eighties. It's funny. Cause I actually wanted to do it, um, as a miniature, I wanted to do that whole thing as miniature. The funny thing now is like miniatures are so incredibly expensive to do. They are so rare to do and so expensive to do that it, it really became this big debate about is, is this where we're going to put such a large portion of the, the time and money into this? And then also because there's like that destruction element to it, is there um, like, you know, you get one take. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, and what are that screws up? Are you going to be doing that in CG? You're fixing it in CG? Because that's the thing. It's like, if you don't get it, like, if you only have one take and you don't get in that one take, take then you're doing it in CG, like at the end of the day. So, um, but yeah. Well, I wanted to tell you congratulations again. You really brought it. This is bigger, badder, scarier than the first. I love The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. So I can't wait for your next one. Oh, thanks so much. It's such a pleasure talking with you. I, it means so much that you love the movie.